that you can't come on because you've got workmen. Okay, hello everyone. Well, it's April the 1st, April Fool's Day, 2020. Gosh, happy April Fool's. Nobody's played a trick on me yet, but I live alone, so <laughs> I've got to play a trick on myself. Um, thank you all for being here. It's really a pleasure, and I'm so pleased we have England and Ireland on as well. It really makes me happy. And um, I, I'd like to just say that I, I'd like this call, if, if, you know, at least the first part, to be, you know, to be in dedication to Mr. Masuda. I'm sure all of you have seen on um, Facebook and social media, you know, that we just heard that he passed. And so he passed on February the 20th. So it was a while ago and his family just didn't let anyone know. Maybe that's a Japanese thing that you know they keep it really private until um they feel ready to disclose it and i think they know the outpouring you know from nikin consultants and so um melissa can you can you settle down because we can yeah, see i'm just going to get my ear, ear phone, right, so no, that... just settle if you can or just mute yourself so you won't keep coming up um so this news so it was late uh, it was late two nights ago that I saw Mike Demetrius post and I like called him immediately and texted him immediately. And um, I have to say, I've been a total basket case since that time. Yeah. And I'm amazed in a way how deep <coughs> grief stricken I am um, about this man and, and I really thought a lot about it and, and I just wanted to say and I want to hear from all of you your stories about him because I think for me he's sort of been my superhero you know I think it's always lovely to have a superhero uh, man or woman you know and I certainly have superheroes that are people like the Dalai Lama or Gandhi or Martin Luther King and uh, Joan of Arc and you know there's certain superheroes um, please mute yourself if you're, if you're, you're cause it, it's disturbing. And, um, and, and I realized he really is my living superhero, somebody I've actually met. And, and so it just struck me so deeply, this bereftness. Now, none of us have seen him for a long time, but we always knew he was there. And of course he is there. I mean, you know, I talked to Declan last night, my, my ex-fiance and, and you know, I just, uh, he said, well, Julie, he's, he's going to do more good from the other side now than he ever could, you know? And uh, I said, yeah, th that's true. You know, he is still here with us. At the same time, when you know that you'll never hug that person again, any of you who met Mr. Masuda, you know, he was transformative um, with his energy. I would call him a luminary. You don't meet them very often, but as such a high vibrational state, such a healer, that anyone he would hug, and he would stand for hours, hours hugging people, lifting them up, even big men, lifting them up, smiling, didn't speak English, few words, and that was it. But people would be healed. I mean, literally healed, like physically, like their back issue would be healed or you know, their emotional burdens would be lifted and they, they would just cry. And so, you know, I, I, I would just, I, I cried myself to sleep right before last. Yesterday, I cried half the day. I'm sure I look like a mess. I, I want to show you the one picture I have of him and me because I love it so much. And this is the picture. It's so sweet, isn't it? It's so sweet because we were dancing and I want to tell you a little bit that story is just, it was the first convention I'd ever been to. I was a brand new silver. Uh, we had a party, a big party, a lot of people. And somehow he and I just ended up dancing and we danced for a long time. And I will tell you that it was kind of amazing because um, I'm going to see if I can mute you guys if you can mute until you're ready to speak somebody i just keep hearing this noise and it's distracting so whoever it is one of you is moving and it's distracting so please thank you please put your your mute on 
uh, and then and then speak. Um, okay, when you're ready, unmute when you're ready. And anyway, this party, it was one of those extraordinary things. And I'll never forget it. And I think I've told you maybe before, but there was one man I was dancing with and he started crying. And I said, why are you crying? Have I done something, stepped on your foot? And he said, no, I haven't been able to walk for years. I've been in so much uh, agony, you know, with um, diabetic neuropathy in my feet. And look at me now, here I am and I'm dancing with you and it's all because of these insoles, you know, mag steps. And, and when that happened, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, what do we have here? This is extraordinary that this grown man who I don't even know is crying right in front of me because he can dance and hadn't been able to walk. And, um, and then I ended up dancing with Mr. Masuda and I'll tell you, he puffed me out. I mean, he was, and he was a man who was born with weak lungs and uh, had a lot of health issues himself and but he outdanced me i mean i couldn't believe it and i can dance for a long time and still do but um it was like gosh this man is just his energy is incredible and so i love that picture and i talked to ben woodward last night and he said julie it's so lovely because a lot of the pictures are very somber and kind of business-like, you know, with people standing next to each other or very formal. He said, and then there's your picture and you're just kind of like both wild and laughing and dancing. And I said, yes, it, it, there was this recognition, this recognition of this man as a master, you know, I would really call him a master and it was just an extremely beautiful, beautiful thing. So um, if you have not met Mr. Masuda, I'm going to encourage you to meet him on the other side and, and, you know, talk with him because we know we can talk with people when they pass through that veil. They're still there, just not there physically. And, um, and I'd love to hear your stories. And, and I want to tell you the story of Nikin and how he started because some of you may know it and some of you may not. So maybe I'll do that first and then just open it for you to share, but one of the things about Mr. Masuda, there's so many things to say about him, but one of the things is, you know, he did end up being a multi-billionaire and he was the most humble man ever. And you would never, ever know unless you saw him. I remember in LA seeing him kind of come, come in to the entrance um, in a big limo. But if you didn't see that big limo and you didn't know who he was, you would never know. He just, he was just the every man that, that was just beaming and smiling and loving and hugging you. And I always loved that about him. He never had any pomposity about him at all, at all. And I think it's partly because he started from quite sort of lowly beginnings. He had this lung issue his whole life. His mother taught him about the five pillars of health. She was the one who said, you know, this is true way to happiness is you have to have balance in five particular areas of health. And so she was the one that we talk about five pillars all the time came from his mother. And he understood the, the problems of ill health because he did suffer a lot. And then he had his son born, um, you know, as you know, now we can talk about it because he's passed, but you know, his son was born without ears and he felt bereft about that and responsible as in, Jap in Japan they would do. They feel responsible if anything goes wrong with their family. So he felt responsible, deeply responsible, and, and uh, was, you know, obviously had to do everything he could to help his son. And his son needed surgeries, obviously, for his, you know, to be able to hear. And so he didn't have money. He was a bus clerk, and I love that. But he, I mean, just such humble beginnings, right? He's a bus clerk. And he needs to make money to pay for his son's surgeries. So that motivation of, um, you know, your children, like you'll do things for your kids you'll never maybe do for yourself. And so um, it was really powerful because he actually took out a second mortgage on his home for $15,000, whatever that is in, in yen at that time. $15,000, and he started Niken with that money. You know, so he took this enormous risk, right? He's not making much money as a bus clerk. He's got a child that needs surgeries immediately, desperately, and he takes out a second mortgage on his home. He risks his home to start Niken 
And he starts very humbly. And I don't know if you were on Luis Kasuga's call the other day with, um, um, with Dave Johnson, but it was a beautiful call. And he was talking about how Niken started in the, the humble beginnings, not so much Mr. Masuda's story, but, you know, finding, I mean, I have a list here, finding a product that was a market fit that customers would want. He, you know, Mr. Masuda started with small test markets in Japan. Um, you know, passionate about disruption, disruption, disrupting a whole you know, medical industry, basically, you know, with magnetics. I love that because I'm such a disruptor myself. Um, being a redhead, you know, I think we're innately disruptors. Um, fostering awesome company cultures, which he did, you know, just fostered this beautiful Nikken culture we have. Um, took feedback seriously and made changes according to feedback he was getting. Um, focus, very focused on, on make, you know, really taking this to the world. And, and building engaged communities, which we have, which we're very blessed to have. A lot of companies don't have what we have, which is a really loving community. And, you know, do we all love each other all the time? No, not all the time. Do we fight sometimes? Of course we do. You know, we're, we're people, we're humans, it's a family. Um, but we have this loving community and we know we're all here because we believe in this vision and I was thinking about that yesterday and just going, wow, I've never worked so hard at anything as I have worked at Niken. And it's because of his vision and who he is. I was going to say was, but who he is, is so inspiring that I, I would have laid my life down for that man. And I think many of us feel that way. I know you do, Colette. I know you do, Barbara. I know a lot of you that, you know, had the privilege of meeting him or even just seen his photo and understood the beauty of this man, you know, would work so hard for something. And, and I was just really reflecting on that, going, I, I've never worked, and I worked very hard in the Royal Ballet, in Dutch National Ballet, but I never have work the way I worked for him because he inspired me to pull out all the stops and do everything I could to bring this vision to bear in the world. And, uh, and I know you feel that way, or some of you feel that way. Maybe some of you don't, or it hasn't touched you in that way yet. But I, I do believe we are, you know, privileged to carry on his legacy, this amazing legacy. And, you know, he was very feminine, I will say, in a lot of ways. He wasn't a very masculine individual. He was gentle and compassionate and visionary for sure. You know, huge vision, but very, very kind, very, I'm not saying men aren't kind or whatever, but he wasn't that masculine, testosterone-filled guy who's like, let's go get him. He wasn't like that at all. He was like, we're doing this together. We're in this together. And I, and I, Barbara, I know you'll remember this when he came to one of the conventions and he didn't speak any English and he was on the stage and he was quite shy. He didn't really like to be on stage, I think. Very small man, also very small, my height, you know, five, five or so, and very slender. Um, but he came and he just said, and I think they interpreted it, he just said something super simple like, what, well, I know what he said. He said, look at the person next to you and look deeply in their eyes and see that they are a beautiful human being, just like you. And, and they just want to be happy, just like you. And they just want to love, just like you. And that was his entire message. And, just, and then he was just like, just to hug. You know, and you know, Alma, the hugging saint, they call her Alma. She just hugs people. And really, that's really what he did. He just hugged people and said, you know, you're special. And there's no one like you in this world. So what a legacy. You know, what, 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 what a beautiful thing that we get to bring his spirit through what we do and how we do it, you know, with Niken. So... That, that's what I wanted to say. I remember that so perfectly, that convention was in LA and, 
and uh, and just going, yeah, I'm in. You know, if you're the if you're the founder of this and you're the leader of this and you're the instigator of this, I'm in. You know, I uh, I want to be a part of such a such a culture. So let's open it up and let's hear your stories. I'm sorry, I'm so emotional. I, I thought I was over it already now, but obviously I'm not. Um, gonna take a little time. But let's hear any stories, whether you met him or not. If you haven't, I'm sure you have a story that you've heard about him. What I would love to hear and, and you know, make this a real dedication to his spirit of joy and love and peace. Who would like to start? Colette, oh, you open up, un, unmute yourself. I mean, I can unmute you, but you, you can unmute you. Do you want to unmute yourself? Yeah. Let's hear from you, Colette. No, I've lost you. I haven't, no. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Me? Well, like you, Julie, um, when I heard the story of Mr. Masuda, I said, I'm all in. This is, this is the company. This is something I have been searching for. And I remember when I won the, I was one of the very lucky people to have won the competition to Japan. Yes. And he wasn't there, but I sensed his sense of humor when he had um, that science fiction movie with Keanu Reeves was, was all the go. I can't remember the name of it now, but he had the blue, you take the blue pill or the red pill or the pink the pill. Matrix. Yeah. The Matrix, yes. And he had under our seats, under your seats. So will you go ahead or will you, will, you, will you work in this company? Will you make decisions for this company? The answer is under your chair. And we were in, we were in a cinema. And he said, it's, it's, and it was a blue pill or a pink pill. And I just said, wow. Even though he wasn't there, Mr. Masuda was there or Mr. Watanabe was there. But I just felt the sense of this man. Yes. I felt the sense of him. And so much so that I have here in my office, on my, in my wisdom corner, I do feng shui. And here yes. in my wisdom corner, I have his, can you see it? Yes. I have his image in a gold frame. Mm -hmm. And uh, Julie, like you, yeah, I have cried. I have cried. And um, there is a huge sense of loss, I think, in the world. And, you know, I think of, I hope, and I, well, I, I know that he's on the other side. And I'm sure every polar bear was there to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the, the wonderful, I remember in the early days going to, rushing across Dublin city to meet uh, a colleague, Joan O'Callaghan was doing a polar bear. And I was in such a hurry, didn't I skid on uh, a, a, a grease or something on the road and bashed in to the back of a bus <laughs> and never got to the polar bear. Nobody was imaged, was damaged, but the company were very mean. They charged me for your man's salary for the day and all this, but you know, it didn't matter. Mm. It, it didn't matter. Um, the polar bear competition was, 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 was successful and I got the photographs and I arrived there a little bit bedraggled, but all the fun was over. We used to love that. I'm looking, yeah. I have to get my polar bear to show you. Yeah. Because of the polar bear award, because he always said, I will not rest until the you know, rivers That's are clean right. and the polar bears are yeah. white yeah. again. And wow. I bought this in Vancouver. It's Salish. It's um, made by the Salish Indians. And Beautiful. I bought this because, because of him. So thank you for reminding yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. That's and now, and now we, have to, we have to think of the polar bears now have a whole different challenge with the ice melting. So maybe from the other side, maybe he will enlighten, enlighten people to be more mindful of the earth. And yeah, so I am so privileged and honored to be in this company and to have known you, Julie. And I just think if Mr. Masuda knew that his little company that started out with his $15,000 had actually arrived to all the corners of the earth, as far as Ireland, Absolutely. you know, across the Pacific Ocean, I'm sure. Oh, it's reached so, all I'm, over the world. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. And, we do, and we do bring light. We do bring light with our Nick N message. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, we absolutely we do. Thank you so much. Okay, let's hear from someone else. Who's there who would like Florida to? In Florida. Hey. Yes, please. Oh my gosh, you know, when, when I look back at where we were and uh, yes, I met him. Yes, I had the amazing Masuda hug. Uh, I know I'm not as big on Facebook presence, but Steve Bono put it in there very good, you know, about the hug and the just amazing um, who's my business partner or was actually now I'm his upline. Uh, but I am just, when I think of humans being more, the, the emblem of Nikan, we all had our interpretations of, is it, people is it hands you know like is it hands holding the world is it but it didn't matter because all of it was perfect right the people holding hands and the us holding the world and actually if you think about it from each side of the world right two different views are two different and but when i look at when you say you've never worked harder yeah. Who I am is um, exemplifies what he is because we were able to grow into that, to be more, to um, really just want to shine your light, touch others, to have them see the magnificence of who they are and the contribution that they make is the gift that really we are in Nikan. Yes, we help with health and yes, we help with wellness, but that's not it. It's really um, becoming the magnificent you that you know you can be every day sharpening the saw and just looking at um, who can I shine my light with today? Who can I help ignite today? Who is it that is going to be inspired or touched or uh, impacted um, by what you we do and how we build? And it is a business, but it's not a business. <laughs> it's, it's a people business. And when I look at who I was when I started, and now, oh my word, you know, um, I did the vision thing for uh, the leading ladies and I had all my life cycle, you know, the stack of life cycle plans and I just, I just showed some from the beginning and some from the most uh, recent one that, um, but then I showed pictures out in San Diego and such, but I tell you, it is, uh, I am still processing. I'm still, I think what I am going to use this time for, and I invite others to do, is to journal like, like the Masuda vision, the, the, the who the inner who is that is transforming and, and who are you bringing to the world? Who are you bringing? What are you bringing to the world? with our Nikan family, right? I mean, it's just uh, just a time and, and then the time, the timing that we're all in hibernation, <laughs> you know, we're all in our hibernation right now and, and cleaning and whatever we're doing, whatever, and some are still working. Um, yes, uh, I just, I, I just want to underline the humans being more and I am more because of him. And I'm so grateful and so thankful. And I always say the five pillars of health, but in the center, I have spirituality. And that is just uh, a deepening of myself. And I'm so grateful for Isamu Masuda. And yes, I was on a Japan trip and <laughs> what an amazing what an amazing gift uh, he's given all of us and to be global. Um, just thanks for the platform, Julie, and thanks for your love. And thank you. This really, thank you.
No, I'd be thinking about you a lot. I'd be thinking of all about all of you, but I, I was thinking about you a lot because you and I go back so far and, you know, we had the privilege of being with him and, and feeling that energy. And it is all, everything you just said is so true. The, the humans being more is the critical piece and, and the fact that it's, um, it's spirit, you know, it's spirit. And, and that when we created that, remember with the spirit in the center, we were like, yes, that's the, that is true. But in Japan, they didn't have it because they considered it part of mind, you know, so that we were always like, why didn't you have spirit in there? Or, you know, could say God, but maybe people, you know, there's so much different, differing opinions around that. But spirit, it just always felt like that was the one I always used that image with the, you know, spirit in the middle and the, and the pillars around and, and then that they're all important. But it is about humans being more. You're absolutely right. It's all about that, which is why humans being more training is so critical. It's at the foundation. And I would see over and over again, the people who did humans being more training more times over and over were the ones who succeeded because they got out of their own way, you know, and resolved the, 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 the pain of the past and, and forgave and let go of things and could actually move forward. Um, and then they succeeded. I mean, we saw that a million times, right? I know you saw it, all of you. So you've seen it in yourselves. So this is great. Um, who else has a story? Thank you, Barbara, so much for sharing. It's beautiful. Who else would like to share a story? And again, if you haven't met him, you, I'm sure you've heard stories. Is there anyone else you'd like to share? I muted a couple of you just because it was really noisy. So, but you're welcome to unmute, of course. Um, I could tell you, I'm looking at time. I'm saying it's eight o'clock already. My gosh, you know, maybe 50 minutes. But I, I could tell you one, a story that was really beautiful with my father um, and Mr. Masuda. It made me totally cry. <laughs> my dad and many of you, I think, know that my dad was a very famous um, doctor at UCLA. He started the Department of Medical Ethics. He started the um, Psychoneuroimmunology Department um, with, with a few others that. And, uh, and he was highly skeptical of, of NICAM when I started. You know, he's just like, what are you doing? Magnets, whatever, you know. And I was like, dad, this is like the greatest breakthrough I've ever seen, you know, for healthcare. And this is energy medicine. This is brilliant and it works. And he kind of poo-pooed it for a while. And then he started having some issues himself with, with his ankle and, and uh, he got some incredible results. And then he started using more of the products and then he had his insoles. He had several pairs and he put them in, in all his, um, slippers and his sneakers and his dress shoes and I mean, he had a pair in each because he couldn't be bothered to change them around and and it was really great and and he started to really really actually research he actually bought some books on magnetic fields and um started to really study and he was like this really is something to this and i'm like yeah so i don't know quite how this happened but i must have gone to visit dad in la and we went down to the big, um, to, to Niken, you know, the, where the, the, the big Niken, you know, when we had the huge building, such a beautiful building. I'd never seen such a beautiful building like that. And um, somehow, and again, I don't really remember how this happened. We saw Mr. Masuda in the parking lot, in the parking lot. And I introduced them to each other. This is like my two heroes, right? My dad and Mr. Masuda. And, you know, as you know, Mr. Masuda didn't really speak English, but um, what I remember so vividly is they took out their business cards. And I don't know if you know that, you know, like in Japan, they have a very beautiful ceremonial way of giving a business card where they, you know, they stand and then they kind of present it like this with both hands and they present it out and, and Mr. Masuda presented his card to my father. And then my father presented his card back to Mr. Masuda. And for me, it was like, oh my gosh, this meeting of worlds of Western medicine and Eastern medicine, Asian medicine, this is it right here. 
these two men, you know. So it was, it was something, it was like really huge, this level of respect that they had for each other. And I'm sure maybe you remember about, you know, where my dad, right before my dad died, and we didn't know he died very suddenly, he had a fall. After a hip replacement, he had a fall and he went into a coma and being a doctor, he had everything written out about a living will. So we didn't keep him in that state for long. Um, but the last conversation I had with him, literally I was ironing at the time and chatting with him on the phone. And um, he said, and he had fought me a lot on the way I brought my children up, the way I fed them, the way I didn't vac give them vaccines, you know, all these different things. But he said, um, Julie, you are light years ahead of me in medicine. And I'll tell you, it wasn't a pride thing. It was just my father never had said anything like that ever to me, ever. He was always fighting what my decisions were about how to live and especially about healthcare. And, uh, and I was just like gobsmacked, you know, like I couldn't believe that he said that, you know, and then the next thing he said was fly like an eagle because that's who you are. Well, he had never ever said anything even remotely like that. He had always been challenging me my whole life. So I was like, wow. And it was like this incredible blessing. And then, you know, he said, I love you. And I said, I love you. And then, and then, you know, I put the phone down and, and that was the last conversation we ever had. And, uh, and so that memory of him, with Mr. Masuda and what he had said, like he had this complete realization about health, that it's so much bigger than what science tells us and that energy is everything. And he really had this revelation and was just, you know, acknowledging it. And, and, uh, and I remember my response was, well, I'm not light years ahead of you in anything, Dad. I think Nikan is light years ahead in what it's bringing to the world. And, and, and I really believe that. It's light years ahead. And that's what makes it wonderful and beautiful. And we are pioneers. And it's what makes it difficult and hard because people don't get it. And... If you're not a super persuasive person, it can be challenging because you can pull back because people just don't get it. And then you're like, what do I do? How do I help you get it? And which is why rollouts, of course, were always so key because people will get it. Like I talked to a friend yesterday who's a consultant and when I gave him a rollout, you know, afterwards he turned over, it was on his back and then he just like looked at me and this look was like a revelation. Like, what the heck? And I said, do you remember that moment when you looked at me after the rollout? He said, oh, yes, I knew. He said, and I joined because I got it right in that moment. And I was like, yes. So we can't do rollouts right now. Maybe we can do virtual rollouts. <laughs> but it was a key to success for many of us was rollouts um, because it was, took people beyond the cerebral mind and into the body and actually opened the spirit, opened up the energy centers, opened up the chakras. So they actually had a revelation and then they knew, and then you weren't trying to convince them anymore. Yeah. You know, he also is the one that sought out Larry Prophet, and then Larry Prophet was his spokesperson to help train us to get the word out to be that core Mr. Masuda. But, what timing, because, I mean, when you think about a business being born and creating, but for him, he saw the vision. He saw that big picture and he knew what he needed to get out to the world and the catalyst and, and to hire someone with such heart and such caring and a ability to share that rollout love you know, the way we were trained, the way the silence, the, it was a sacred moment and uh, tremendous, tremendous. Thanks for, yeah. yeah. It's like a ceremony, right? I mean, a, a rollout when you do it right, it's a ceremony, like a tea ceremony. It's a ceremony and, every, and the person knows it. It's a sacred thing. And so sending the love. 
and knowing to send the love and you know envelop them in that light and just to focus and actually think in the very beginning maybe that's what i had to do i had to just focus on the person and and sending the love because you can only love as deep as what you know at the moment and so i needed to grow into that but this allowed that window that moment of just total giving total just um honoring of another human being and yeah. tremendous it's really it's such a great thing it's such i i remember a friend of mine who i gave a role at to and and she afterwards she she lay there and she just looked to me and she said i've never felt so loved in all my life that was her response i was like oh wow because that's exactly right that's all we were focused on was loving so who else has a story before we fit we have five minutes and i'd love to hear from any of you who want to share hey kathleen yes kathleen. Kathleen. Hi. hi hi um i never i feel a bit emotional actually um i never met uh, mr masuda and um but i've been involved in two major things in my in my life uh one was with a, a great visionary and that was i ended up being um a trainer and a business consultant and then later on i, I got involved with nick and now i never knew, i sort of heard stories about mr Masuda, but i didn't didn't um i didn't get it as much as i am right now and uh so i found my, i find myself following another visionary um someone who's you know, had great vision. And uh, one thing I'm getting from the conversation and hearing from, from each of you is, uh, you know, we talk about rollouts. I've realized recently, uh, part of why I do Niken and do what I do is because of being there for people, which is like a rollout, you know, it's, it's uh, particularly at the moment. I mean, I'm contacting lots of people at the moment just to say hi just to connect and uh and people are just downloading you know i don't need to say very much but, uh they've got the space to sort of communicate and i realize um from some of the work i've done in the past you know that's i've i've trained in that but i i love it as well i love being there for people and i think we've got that great opportunity it's sort of with this uh, business is to get out there and be there for people and with what's going on at the moment I mean I found this eight to six year old woman who was completely on her own her husband died last year I've not contacted them for three years and um, she was so grateful she was almost tearful you know that I called her and so and, and funny enough uh, people need stuff as well I'm finding I'm not I don't have that agenda when I'm calling people, it's just to be there for them. So I think, and, and I get that very much from this group, you know, that, that we are there for people. And uh, I think that's such an important thing to bring. So that's what I wanted to say. And that's inspired that from this conversation. Thank you. Oh, that's lovely, Kathleen. It's, there's nothing like being present to another human being. We all need it. I think it, it literally makes us become real when someone is with us who is present to us. It mm -hmm. actually, yeah. you know, creates us in a way. We're co-creative in that. And I'd love to think of you doing that. That makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a yeah. beautiful thing. And, and, and I'm sure you've all seen that in these last you know, weeks now is, you know, people are reaching out whom you haven't maybe spoken to in a long time, or you're reaching out to them. I, I'm seeing that I'm talking to people I haven't talked to for ages. And it's just lovely. And yeah, and family and like, because we're all I mean, this is really, I mean, everybody's saying it, but it's an unprecedented moment because we're all in it together. I mean, no, you never have an experience like that where you're all in it together. And how are we dealing with it? And, and I, 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 I know some people are going bonkers, you know, being at home by themselves. I'm really used to it. I'm quite introverted. I'm used to meditating. I'm used to being quiet. 
I, it, it doesn't actually bother me at all. In fact, I've been very happy um, in my own little world of dreams and music and everything else. But, and I'm working full day, full, full on every day as well, full days. But I agree with you. It's like you're reaching out and you're realizing, oh my gosh, this person is all by themselves and they haven't reached out, but I reached out as you did. And, and it, this, this is just a beautiful thing. And, and yes, Connie, I think it is a silver lining. I think there's tremendous silver linings here. Um, I, I think uh, it's about human connection. And again, it's about love and it's about humans being more. And, and now is a time like no other to just be present. Just what you're saying, Kathleen, just being present is everything. Because it's not a just about it. It's, we need that. All of us need that for each other. And we're very blessed because we have a Nikan family that is there for each other. I mean, we're really lucky. A lot of people don't have what we have, this global, caring, loving community. And I, I am so grateful for, for what we have. And, and, we, and like you said, Kathleen, like people actually need things, but you didn't go out there with the agenda of, you know, do you need something? You're just present. You're just loving them. And then those needs come forward naturally. And then they feel safe and feel trusting. Uh, and then, you know, you can help them because that's really all we want to do, right? Is help people fundamentally. I mean, yes, we all need to make a living. Absolutely. Of course. But it all is driven by, you know, wanting to help. And that's Mr. Masuda in spades. It's like he just wanted to help you see how beautiful you are and how unique you are. And his thing, I just want to see you smile. Is it, right? It's so beautiful. So we're really blessed and we, we have quite a legacy to bring forward. And I know we can, and I know we will. I know we do. I know we have been. It's all good. And, and we're really, we are beacons of light. And I, I, Linda, when she hears this, she's going to burst out laughing because we actually said our mantra was we're Nikan beacons <laughs> because we just want to radiate our light, our love. And, and that's what you're doing with every phone call is connecting and touching and and now we have the Zoom platform where we see and just a beauty and a real heart touch. And that's what I think humanity. I just. Uh, yes. Yes. I just want to say that um, from, I never met Mr. Masuda, but um, I've heard the stories and I feel the love. And just um, being here now and hearing the depth and the light that's coming through, you know, every woman um, on here and um, just this platform is radiating that love that Mr. Masuda um, gave so generously. So I feel so blessed um, to be here and to experience um, the grace and the love which you have shared so beautifully and it's so real. So thank you. Thank you, Carol. You always share it on every comment you ever make and everything, it, always full of love. So and we feel you too. Thank you so much. And I'm aware of our time and I need, we need to, to complete. So um, unless this, somebody bursting to say something that hasn't yet um other than that i don't want to keep us i know we have all kinds of other things to do but thank you you know so much yeah thank you so much for this call and uh sorry i'm so emotional uh but you we really are lucky we really are blessed to be part of this and um let's just stay connected all right and remember what's important which is humans being more and becoming more, as you said, Barbara, and loving one another. And yeah. Julia, I think we need to send this to the leading ladies, send this to Heather, this recording. I think it'd be a great thing to have on that for the next month. So thank you so much for this. Great.
for love. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, everyone. Thank you so much. Love you all. And I've completely forgotten where to stop the recording. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> stop the recording. Yay. Uh,